So if you are a more of a regular viewer of the Trading Rack channel, you might have noticed that I have been always using MacBook and you know iOS for everything that I did. I got so many questions every time about how I am able to run the Sierra charts uh, in the MacBook, which I have always done with the Parallels virtual machine. But recently, I kind of realized that uh, everything that basically I do is uh, trading wise, you know, uh, everything that I do trading wise, you know, I'm using virtual machines for a lot of things. And it came kind of to the point where I also noticed that my MacBook is generally a little bit slower when it comes to, you know, using something like Parallels. So long story short, you know, I decided to buy a Windows PC, which is the thing that you see right now, you know, I been using Windows for a long, long time before I switched to Mac. Now I have this kind of a smaller gaming PC uh, where I will be basically trading from. So this actually gave me a nice opportunity for something that I wanted to do for a while because what you can see here is the Sierra charts that I have nothing on basically. It's fresh, new, you know, I have no chart books, I have no custom studies, uh, I actually have uh, the things I imported, you know, I have my chart books here, but uh, I will be today setting everything fresh, uh, so you can use this as a guide for a Sierra chart, this is going to be a longer video, I think that is going to be a lot of kind of a freestyle in it as well, so please, you know, um, have a little bit of a patience with me here. I will try to add the chapters so at least you can kind of a go through things that you are uh, personally struggling with. But yeah, without further ado, let's uh, let's just jump into this. So first things first, serachart.com. It's a uh, something that cl just closed. <laughs> so give me a second. It's a trading platform that allows you to trade uh, futures, crypto, you know, stocks, uh, everything. Also worth to mention, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Uh, so it's just going to be my very honest opinion. But in my honest opinion, this is really a best trading platform that ever came out. It looks horrible. You know, the website makes you feel like you are back in 90s. Um, if you ever try to set ever anything in Sierra, it's pain in the ass to do it, but it really is a great platform. It allows you to do anything uh, you want. You know, it has a built-in kind of a programming language, which is very easy to understand. Even I was able to make my own kind of a indicators and stuff. So uh, it has lots of customization. You know, you can basically anything that you um, can think of it can be done in Sierra chart. Obviously, like I said, the downside is that the learning curve with the platform is quite steep. Uh, it took me, I think, around two or three months when I started to get like fully uh, familiar with it. So it definitely takes time. Before we look at the platform, you go to the Sierra uh, You can, they even edit a dark mode now, which they forgot to change the logo. So this tells you basically how with the current kind of a time and age where every company tries to be as kind of a UI friendly, user friendly and everything. These people just don't care, uh, which is kind of funny actually, but uh, yeah. You have your account here, basically I'm not going to log in because it's under my real name, I don't really want to kind of share that, but if you go to here, you can see the pricing, uh, basically what you will need to use all the kind of a order flow tool and everything basically why you would use the platform like a Sierra chart for, um, you will need a package 11, which is $46 a month. This is only for the platform. If you are trading crypto, which currently you can use BitMEX, you can use Binance, you can use FTX, uh, and you can also use uh, Bitfinex and Deribit, I think. Uh, you will only need this for crypto. To be 100% fair though, if you are only using crypto, I wouldn't, if I would be only trading crypto, 
I would be using exocharts. Okay, uh, hands down, you know, it's much easier to learn. It can do almost uh, same thing as the Sera chart. So if you are only into crypto, I would consider going to exocharts.com and look at their platform. I think it's excellent platform. Um, if you are trading legacy markets, though, you will also need to uh, buy a data, obviously, which can come around, I think, $10 a month. On top, you know, you will have this kind of a Denali data feed, which I believe is built in this $46 package. If, if it's not, then uh, it will be extra $10. So I think you'll be in within like $50 to $100 range, basically, uh, when it comes to your kind of a monthly fee for the platform and data and everything. Nowadays, you can also obviously trade directly within the Sierra charts. Uh, I think the broker that allows that or, or the broker I know definitely allows that it's edge clear. You know, they have, oh uh, Jesus, these things are somewhere in their website. Basically, you will find out that they offer uh, trading the CME markets, you know, you cannot if you're trading Eurex, like if you're trading bonds, if you trade, you know, DAX or Euro stocks, you cannot trade that. Uh, they only support the CME at the time. Uh, so that's the option number one. You can explore the supported brokers for crypto. It's only BitMEX, um, the Binance or FTX and other uh, exchanges are not able to trade. You can only use them for charting. So better than mind. Uh, but yeah, you will have to kind of explore that for yourself. Uh, I um, I can't at this point count how many messages I got uh, about the platform and about platforms overall. Uh, I'm always a little bit salty when people ask me about the platforms. You know, when people ask me actually about trading, I'm always more than happy to kind of give hand if I can or whatever. If people ask me about uh, the platforms, you know, I'm not... <laughs> the customer service you will go here to the support and you can you can be sure that someone already asked uh, the questions you don't know so just google stuff basically okay um, but yeah these are kind of the basics uh, information you need to know about Sera when it comes to setting it up uh, you will just kind of download it from from the um, from the website I think one last thing I forgot to mention is if I will take a look here at the AMP futures and I think they don't have it anymore. No, they don't. Uh, some brokers will offer Sierra chart for free as, as kind of a part of their package. So that used to be a thing. I don't know how it is now, but you might want to export that. This is obviously for the legacy markets. And uh, yeah, if you are on the Mac, uh, there are two things you can do. The first, uh, first is, is the thing that I did, which is this parallels, uh, dot com. I think it costs around hundred dollars for the lifetime, uh, license. So it's, yeah. Oh, it's hundred it's hundred euros a year, basically. Um, so, and I would, I would definitely recommend you this uh, bigger kind of RAM edition. You know, I ha I had only this. I had a little bit of a slow issues. I think this wasn't the thing when I was uh, buying it two years ago. So definitely, I would consider this for 120. And the second option, which I tried and I know it works, is this. Uh, it's crossover for Mac. So this will also allow you to run Seracha. This is cheaper. This is 75 uh, euros, uh, I think for one year or software, whatever, you know, go and look at that as well. I already spent too much time just talking about stuff. So let me go directly to the Sierra chart. If you will open this thing for the first time, you will have some example chart book pop up. Uh, everything about this platform, if you go to your uh, installation folder, you know, you will have this uh, Sierra chart fol folder in your PC. Um, every important thing is stored here in the data folder, all the chart books, all the data for the for the instruments you will download. You have the chart book groups, which I will talk about later on. 
everything you will find here everything you can delete from there and you know it will be just deleted from the platform if someone sends you some chart book you will just edit here and you know um you will it will then appear in this kind of file open chart book section so first things first if you want to make a new thing in sera chart you will go to the file click the new chart book uh you can see that this chart book one thing popped up here basically uh, this is a your sort of a template you know in the chart book you can kind of store everything um you know you cannot just kind of open a new chart and add things to it you always need to have a chart book which is just this kind of a uh template where everything is stored you know uh i will go to the file open the new intraday chart and then i will the choose i you can see that i have already some some things downloaded here if you don't you know if this is really the first time let's say that i will open the es chart here if you want to open something else uh you will go to chart chart settings uh that is all it's also f5 i think the shortcut and they recently changed this menu to even uglier version of what it was before and this is extremely kind of complicated <laughs> i would say but if you go here to the symbol you will click the select then you can see all the available symbols this will change based on your kind of connection i didn't mention that uh file and the date trade service settings these are the connections that are using the, the, the default one which is if you are going to use the sera chart for charting only will be this uh s seed data all services basically this this has crypto this has everything uh if you will be then using for a trading you can see that there is this that on cme order routing this is what i used with edge clear uh and there are some other things one last thing I need to mention is if you will be using a Sera chart only for charting and you will be you want to be charting something like uh, e mini SP, you know, all the legacy markets and everything, you need to have a live account somewhere which you will use to connect the Sera chart once a month. Uh, I have this CQG uh, web API. I have a, a account with AMP futures. Uh, you only need to use it for the minimal deposit. You know, I deposited two hundred dollars, which I think is minimum. And I just use this account to connect the Sera chart basically once a month to still get the, the data feed. Once again, you will find this on their website. I'm not going to go too in depth to that because it's once again super complicated, but you know, it is what it is. But in like a normal cases, this SC data or services, you will just connect, you know, mine connects automatically and you are connected to the live feed. So back to this chart window to change the symbol i will be doing things with bitcoin today because i know most of you are trading it so you know it makes more sense you'll go to binance uh get symbols this will take a little bit once again as unuser friendly as it is uh but yeah once this opens you will just scroll down <laughs> it's it's really pain in the ass like I wanted to give up on this thing so many times i'm kind of glad that i didn't but yeah it's it's uh the learning curve here is quite steep btc usdt perp uh is the symbol you want to be using you will click ok ok now right off the start you know something you need to pay attention to uh the auto set data from data feed it has to be clicked no you you will click apply and then you need to quickly change this to no uh the issue here is that you know it's um did they fix that oh they actually fixed that so it's my bad because this thing used to be like 0 0.00 you know they didn't have the proper text size set for bitcoin and uh yeah but they seem to check this if you will see just string of zeros and then one at the end just click here to the no and you know you can change this to just one and you know it will move just by the dollar basically you know and then you will kind of have have that but you know apparently they fixed this or yeah seems like they fixed this um okay so the next things you will be need to changing here in this in this kind of a 
insane window when it comes to chart and I will show you basically three things today. Uh, the first thing is going to be how to set up the normal charts and just drawings and all the symbol settings and then we will make very quick foot, uh, footprint and we will make very quick TPO chart as well. So um, when it comes to these things you don't need to change much here when we will go to data limiting. Uh, this is important because obviously here is how many days you want to get loaded. I have the 30 is on the default, you know, if you will be using some high, higher time frame charts, for example, you know, you want to bump this to let's say 100 or even more. Once again, this, this will just tell you how many uh, days are going, going to get loaded. Uh, the bar period, um, this is the intraday chart and you have all the type of settings for the uh, bar periodicity as you if you you know know a little bit the days minutes seconds is not the only thing you can use you can use tick charts you can use Renko you can use you know range bars or whatever uh, for example tick chart if I will go um, here is the number of trades per bar uh, and then I need to, you know, once again increase that, let's say like 5,000 and if things, this will load, you know, I have a, this, this is a 50,000 tick chart, so this is super quick, uh, so, so it's super slow, but you can see now I have a 5,000 tick chart, for example. Uh, drawing types, obviously you can change this to the candlestick bars and um, there are some other things you want to explore. You have a session times here, you know, for BTC. Uh, you want to kind of look at your time zone, you need to know when the new daily opens, you know, it's 2 a.m. my time, so I will set it up like this, so I have a proper kind of a session times, you know, uh, this changed for whatever reason this happened, uh, not sure why this happened, <laughs> um, and I'm not going to kind of go to that in that uh, this is weird but yeah just make sure you have a proper session times hmm. whatever I need to look at this further after I'm done um, display I think there is nothing really too super important here you can link uh, if you go to the linking here and you will link the symbol here as you will have the more and more charts, uh, these will be linked together. So if you will change the symbol, you know, for for one, then the symbols for other will change. You can set the bar periodicity and stuff like that. This is not the same thing as the drawing, chart drawings, basically. Uh, if you want to copy settings, uh, I will show this in a little later on, but you can take a look here to the top of the chart and I think that I was supposed to have this kind of a small drawing thing on this recording software, but it's gone now. Oh, it's here. If you will go, uh, if you will take a look at the this number here, this number one right there, uh, this thing, okay, um, you will uh, put, this is the number of the chart basically, so if I would have, you know, chart number five, for example, I will put uh, number five here, click apply and all the drawings for the number five would, uh, you know, transition basically to this chart as well. Uh, other things, I think that these are kind of the specific stuff you need to just kind of a uh, go through by yourself, but this was the most important kind of thing. So first things first, you know, if you want your, let me just change this to, oh, let, let's just keep it. Uh, if you want your Sierra chart not to look extremely ugly, you will go to the global settings, graphic settings, you can change everything here, you know, you can change the font size, you know, that, that, that you have you have all the kind of a default, you know, Windows fonts basically, so you can change that. Uh, if I want to, you know, set it on like a, I can change the background color here, obviously, then I will also need to change the uh, the texts, um, there are obviously many different kind of texts I need to change there as well. Uh, I will scroll down a little bit. We have a candlestick upline. You know, this is like a very default kind of thing. Uh, you are most likely used from a 
any other any other platform basically it has this kind of a windows 95 wipe of course of course it does you know but uh the settings the color settings are here for any chart if you want to have kind of a specific chart colors you can go to the chart and you have a graphic settings chart this is the same thing but if you untick this box you know this chart coloring will you know I, for example i will just put this to the white uh you can see that everything changed because i untick this i will pick it back you know it will be the same thing as it was before so now the important things i'm just quickly checking if i didn't forget anything settings uh in here in general settings there are some important things and i need there is i think yeah this for crypto you want to go to global settings general settings and you want to use the monday as start of the week instead of sunday so your uh you know your month your weekly candle basically will not be a sunday candle but the monday one you know this is a specific thing for B btc if you use you know obviously a higher time frame so like, like i said i just you can simply press on the keyboard you can just i just did i press one and d and press enter you know change the daily if i do 3d as a three day if i just do 240 m it will be four hour 30 m you know just clicking at the buttons on the keyboard basically will will do it there so okay let me add some things uh what we are going to be doing is uh setting up the lower time frame chart so i will once again let's just go to the five minute you know keep things simple so first things first you want to press f6 or you will go to the chart yo uh, you'll go to analysis and studies this is your window where all the indicators happen okay you have um basically anything you add to the chart you will find here there are custom studies obviously there is so much stuff to go through here uh to keep things simple you know some simple day trading uh indicators that you might be looking for in any uh order flow platforms the first one will be the cumulative volume the cumulative delta bars volume this is cumulative volume delta obviously they couldn't make it simple uh you just double click it it will move here and this is where your studies are basically on the kind of right side here you click the apply it will reload for a second and you have this cvd on chart for crypto for example you know once again you will just double click the thing you can click here unclick that and you know this will be continuous instead of resetting on each day uh and you can go to settings here you know you can change it you can change the colors you know to make to make it a little bit more kind of a coming uh in line with your other settings basically that you have you know you'll just change this um to whatever colors you like i'm not going to you know i don't want to make this too long but obviously uh you know it will be kind of a part of, of the things that you do you know, i'm just gonna do it since i started anyway um you can also unclick these things uh which is kind of a nice visual thing that it will just delete that um you know the name so you will get a little bit of more chart space uh you can see here it's in chart region two now if i would put it to one it will just overlay the bars you don't want that if i put it to the three you know it will create a space uh so yeah it's in chart region one uh click ok then you can kind of move it you know from this kind of bar right there and you have a cvd on chart uh quite simple let me add some more things uh we can do the vweb now you will just type the volume or you will just scroll because it doesn't work uh if you will just scroll a little bit you know we have a volume weighted average price somewhere in here double click it you can click apply uh, it will appear here once again you have so many different kind of settings it can be daily monthly you know yearly this is this is where you will start to notice basically Sierra chart kind of shining a little bit uh, because you know everything has so many different settings you know once again you can change the colors and everything 
I can what I can do for example if I want to add the standard deviation bands you can see that we have a settings here uh, I will just change the first band here to the one although it's on the second one but if I go to the subgraphs you can see that these are ignored I can only see this one and then once again you have so many different kind of a uh, settings for how this is actually going to be you know drawn on your chart or whatever um, this doesn't work for what reason now okay you know what i did here i put this to transfer transparent fill bot bottom and top you know gave this you know you can change the opacity here as well you know you will have these kind of a standard deviation bands you know with this kind of a a nice underlying tone basically there so uh simple v web you know plus the standard deviation bands you can obviously go back pressing f6 add more standard deviation bands you can see if i would just do two three four uh and instead of ignore i would have the dash here uh oh i need to change the color because it's got the same color as the background i pick the ugliest one obviously but you know i have more standard deviation bands just edit to the chart uh like that so Another one, we can do a volume profile. This is going to be a funny one because I haven't done this for a while. Um, it's one of the most more complicated ones. You need to go to volume by price uh, indicator. You will double click it. Uh, if I click just apply here, it's taking a long time to load, which is not the best thing. First of all, what you want to do is you want to double click that and for something like crypto, you need to change this ticks per volume bar. What this actually means that instead of just, you can see that how kind of a super granular this is because instead of just every kind of tick, uh, you don't need that for, for uh, you know, like liquid market, uh, sorry, the thin markets like crypto. So you can just bump it to like 20 and you can see right now we have a volume that is uh for all visible bars so everything that i see on chart it pl it's plotting the volume profile i don't want that i want this only for one day so if i'm going to click here i need to change this for uh the multiple profiles based on a fixed time yeah and we having the volume profile for each day uh now i need to kind of a play with this a little bit you know you can change change the width you know so to not make it so huge you can pick you know and you can see every indicator has this so so many different kind of settings so once again you know it's uh very hard for me to just go through each and every one but you know definitely a lot of things you can do um i can if i unclick this you know uh this is how you can add also the delta profile i'm not going to do that uh in here the the thing that is important here is obviously i i want to highlight a value area so you know it will the value area here is going to get highlighted i want to highlight the point of control you know the things that i kind of care about when i use the volume profiles uh and then you know after you do all that you can obviously also uh extend these things uh you can see it's kind of here you know extend point of control the until further intersection is nice feature that you know will will only highlight the pocs that are basically naked um only these will be highlighted you can also extend the uh value area and whatever once again if you go to the subgrab settings you know you can change the color so this is going to be a little less ugly um you know this is this is so kind of up to you how you want to set things up i can put this to the very light thing then i have the value area and outline you know let's do this like in a blue color uh if i then go back to the settings i can do um there is this setting for a using a transparent uh, drawing style, so I can put that to yes. You know, this will get a little bit more kind of a not too aggressive. You know, at least how I like things is uh, still be kind of able to see what's going on. So I would do something like this personally. But you can see that already we have 
volume profile, we have CVD, we have the VWAP with standard deviation bands, we have the naked points of control highlighted. You know, it's it's starting to look decent. I, I think it looks decent <laughs> at least. Okay, so this is the normal kind of chart. Um, if I click here on the downside, uh, if I right click there, you know, I can rename this, let's say this, this will be a intraday chart. What I can do then is if I just right click it, I can duplicate it. Uh, you know, something will pop up here uh, quickly. And you can see it happened already. If I check the F5, there is this auto set from the data feed. I knew they wouldn't fix something like that. So I will just quickly click this to no and, you know, uh, set it to one and one basically. Uh, for this chart, you know, I will go to the 30 minute time frame. Um, press F6. You can delete all that and you can just kind of start, you know, with your higher time frame chart. Then I can go just window title vertically. Basically, I have a day trading chart and a little bit of a higher time frame chart. You can add very different things from, you know, like previous days, highs and lows, you know, some higher time frame volume profiles or whatever. What I want to show you though is if I go to the tools, we have all the drawing tools basically here. I have a horizontal line. I have a horizontal ray. I have, um, you know, I have different kind of rectangles. Once again, everything you draw, you just right click drawing properties. You can change the outline. You can change the filling of the thing. You know, you can do basically anything what you want with that. Uh, another cool tool is you can just draw your volume profile like this, you know, and it will just kind of happen. Uh, if you also go to the tools, you have a pointer, you have a kind of a crosshair here. Uh, with the crosshair, you can also go to the tools and you can click the global cursor on, which means, you know, obviously you will see from all the charts with the same symbol, you will see the crosshair on chart. Uh, another thing is hand, which does that. I didn't know. Oh, I don't know what I did now. Uh, I feel like I messed up something. <laughs> Let me just um go back a little bit if i i used to have all these and you can all also uh you can also kind of a key bind everything which let me just move this a little bit three upside first and if i would let me okay this is a little bit uh messy i might have pressed something you know this will happen very often with this platform you will just press something okay it's back now uh i need to turn off the notifications for the discord one second okay um anyway if everything seems to be working now at least um if I will press the F5 on this 30 minute chart and once again, like I mentioned, you know, you have these chart numbers, you know, this is chart number two, this is chart number one, you can see this here in this upper corner, pressing F2, uh, uh, sorry, F5 on this intraday chart, I will go to the chart drawings, uh, there is this number five, if I click apply, which I already did, I obviously need to put a number two there, click apply. You can see that obviously this is you can see that all the all the draw, drawings that i did not the volume profile the volume profile is not considered to be a drawing itself you know it, this this will not transition to the other time frames but the uh the lines and the rectangle that i did it's there and if i will delete it from here you know it will disappear from there as well um other thing that I want to do, if I click on chart, I can hide these title bars basically. So it gets a little bit kind of cleaner. You know, you have this kind of more of a borderless type of scenario basically. Okay. So we have simple charts, you know, once again, you know, you can rename this to 30 minute chart. You have these things together. Uh, the next thing I will be doing, I will once again, just duplicate this. Uh, you will need to press F5, you need to uncheck this, set this to correct settings because this will do, this will basically happen anytime you want to um, do a new chart, go to tools, 
erase everything uh, this profile stayed here for whatever reason I will just delete it like that okay so the footprint chart is fairly simple because it's just another indicator uh, let me go to lower time frames let's say that this will be a five minute chart uh, you will go tools uh, sorry you will press f6 and it's the numbered numbered bars uh, the reason is numbered bars and not a footprint or anything you know the footprint the name is copyrighted trendmark you know you won't find it there if you click the numbered bars press ok this will load it looks super messy once again and you have basically two ways to fix that uh, the first one is you will press f5 again and you will change the tick size here to let's say 10 uh, and you can see that you know it's, it's grouped by the 10, 10 num uh, basically 10 prices another option if you go to f6 double click here uh, no it's not an option I'm sorry my bad that's only for tpo you need to change this basically for a higher tick size this is the same if you ever use the extra charts or any other platforms you know this is your tick setting basically okay so we have this it's super ugly but it's a footprint nonetheless um, everything you do you will press f6 double click that and here are your settings so first things first you know uh, I don't want to see a volume in terms of number I want to see a this the simplest one which is the bid and ask you know let me just extend this so we will see this a little bit but you can see that the numbers are super huge you will double click that you will scroll all the way down and you have use large volume number formatting you will click yes now we are in the millions kind of an area it looks a little bit better there is one more thing you can do with that you will press f5 uh, and you have this volume open interest multiplier you can multiply this number let's say by you know all these zeros and one you will click ok and you you this is too small uh if i do something like this you will see now you know for btc all these numbers obviously it's times you know uh times thousand basically so it's just a aesthetic thing but you know something that i use always because because obviously i don't want to see this huge millions you know all the time on the chart so i just use it like this let's change the how this thing is going to look everything like i said done here uh background type you can see you know you have many options to play with you can do this as volume profile you can do this as bid, bid and ask split profile um I I like I like use this one I like use this one probably the most uh, this one ask bit difference profile you know shows high kind of bit and ask uh, executed you know the deltas basically for each price are shown here very simple uh, I can once again you know do some more of a aesthetic type of thing uh, something that I haven't mentioned is if you obviously like the color and you choose some custom color you will just kind of click this button and it will automatically you know add to your custom colors kind of a bar uh, you need to change this uh, for each kind of a shading type so you can see now we have this very ugly green bar basically uh, I can do same thing with the red you know change this for all the red colors um, this now I think is and still needs a little bit changing because now you can see that the whole bars are colored um, this is how the color coloring is happening is basically happening on the volume percentage I don't want that I want this to happen on the bit ask percentage and you can see now it coloring based on the dominant bit ask once again lots of settings uh, one of the more kind of a accurate one would be this uh, diagonal dominant side because obviously you know these are things are done diagonally uh, but if you are new to this just click this based on bit ask well, per, uh, percentage basically this is like the most common one with the most footprints anyway uh, then you know like I said you can only do like a background on the dominant side and it will just highlight the dominant delta basically for each price 
um, or you can just do the volume profile like I said this is very much a personal preference of what you want to do uh, when it comes to your footprint but this is basically how you how you set the things thing up you know from from like a most uh, simplest perspective if you will scroll down you can you know change the text color or whatever another thing is if you want to highlight the imbalances that's a little bit complicated because uh, how I would do that is I would hide all this text here uh, or maybe I don't have to do that let's just give me a second yeah you you will need to change this text coloring method and you need to go this diagonal dominant side with ask all percentage uh, we click apply and now it's colored but you need to then uh, separate text coloring method and you will have the imbalances i'm not going to you know uh change the colors and everything we don't spend too much time here also uh you know this is a little bit too kind of a um the 400 this this will only do the 400 percent imbalance basically on the um on the text so yeah, this color percentage compared to threshold, you know, instead of 25, 50 and 75%, I just changed it to 444, which means 400 for each bar. Uh, but this is the simplest kind of a footprint. Like I said, I'm not going to spend too, too much time this. You can also add, add this study, which is the numbered bars, cal uh, colored values. The, what this thing does is obviously, you know, uh, you can ask your bid uh, you can add your bid ask difference which is your delta you know you have all these different kind of things that you can add you know point of control volume for example for whatever reason you would want to have that on your chart and you know these are just different kind of statistics and you can once again change the colors for everything and and set things up uh i definitely made one of the ugliest footprints uh i have ever seen when it comes to colors and everything i'm sorry for that uh, but yeah, I just wanted to very quickly show you how you can how you can do this yourself and you know how things work. You can, for example, uh, go down here, click on this highlight non-zero bid and ask uh, column one with extending um, lines in the further intersection. Then you will once again need to make this a little less aggressive. I like to put this to alternate um, and go to like gray color this is the chart color obviously uh, but what this thing does and i don't know yeah, i didn't save that uh, what this thing does is it's highlighting the unfinished auctions uh, which for something like btc is not really important i would say to do but if you are trading you know something like es or bonds is definitely one of the great things to have uh, i'm going to get rid of this now because it's terrible uh, but yeah one last thing uh, so we have our footprint now one last thing i will once again double click this thing press the f5 change the tick settings you know and once this thing loads uh, we will delete all the drawings and everything uh, and I will add the market profile. So the market profile is once again can be found in the uh, indicator tab. It's TPO profile chart. You will click apply. This will take a little bit load. It looks not great, <laughs> but uh, we will just do some quick things, uh, quick changes to that. First of all, uh, you want to press F5. You have this. Uh, TPO chart right there. You want to increase your ticks here a little bit so you will get these more little more like a squares. I need to change the value area because obviously it get the same color as my background because that's why you cannot see that. Okay, we have it now there. Um, okay, so we have a very simple market profile F6. Uh, go to the settings so we will very quickly go one by one it's already set for the days you can change here you will have a weeks years month whatever you want um, here you will see the setting for 
uh, if you want this to be a market profile or the volume profile if you change these things it will highlight POC and value area based on the volume so that's something you want to kind of te test and play around with it what I like to do I like to extend single prints I like to extend the poor highs and poor lows uh, I like to extend the points of control as well so everything gets kind of extended I can ever see everything happening uh, I can you can change the different coloring types here you know based on the days of the week uh, based of the sessions also you can shade these things based on you know based on time basically and you can change the horizontal bars blocks and you know the the classic letters that you are all aware of uh, I guess um, when it comes to the TPO there is also this you can change the size of the letters and all, all the different stuff uh, once again you will find basically everything here you have a, an initial balance highlighted as well for the first two, two periods um, so once again very quickly if I would just uh, you know play around with the colors pick my ugly blue that I chose you know for the point of control I like to go orange uh, which I didn't do here you know I like to go orange here I would go uh, there and you know it looks still ugly a little less ugly uh, one last thing uh, the you can set when you have a letters for if you press this to zero which you can see is auto you know you it will automatically change the uh, letters based on how much you are zooming in so that's definitely something that's worth to do um, but yeah everything you can once again is in this settings and subgraph you know bars you know you have your poor highs poor lows these are set for white uh, if I go to this you know make these things a little lower I don't want them to be too huge you know then you can see them <laughs> but yeah everything kind of a POC extension line once again will be in there and so on and so forth so this is how you set up your TPO chart uh, and basically if I will go to if I title this in like vertical bars you know obviously you will want to have your main intraday chart here then you want to have your 30 minute chart and you're just gonna move things how you how you like them to be you know you have your TPO and then the footprint will also add there and you have your first kind of a layout you know it's it's looking horrible uh definitely not the most aesthetic thing that i have ever seen but you know it's essentially it works if things get a little bit you know you need to just kind of move things a little bit and adjust things you know to you can see them clearly but yeah that's this i think i'm sure you will be able to figure that out um like i said this is your chart book this is where all the things uh, happen so if i will click here and i click save you know i have my chart book one i will save it you know it's saved um and that's that so something that you want might want to do because obviously let's say that i will now make a new chart book and i will add the e mini s p uh for the December contract, uh, let me just put the candlestick bars here as well. Let's say that I want to add my intraday kind of a setting for that I made, you know, on this Bitcoin chart. You know, I want to have my um, WeWeb, I want to have my profile, I want to have my CVD, and I don't want to do all of that, you know, again. So I will press F6, and then. In this section right here, I can just type the intraday chart, whatever. You want to click that always and just click save all and yes. What this does when I click the chart book number two is I go to the analysis tab and I have this my intraday chart, which I just did. Click on that, click yes, and you can see it's all the set there. You know, so on the five minute chart, I have uh, my profile and everything. The volume profile here looks ugly because there is a high tech setting, which obviously yes uh, is a thin thin market, thinner market. Sorry, the thicker market. So you need to just change it back to one or whatever. Okay, so this is how you kind of save your templates. You know, if I would then click on this F6 on this uh, footprint, once you know 
repeat the step here, footprint, save all, click yes, go down here, uh, analysis, footprint, click yes, you know, I have a footprint chart for ES, just like that. So these, I think, were the major things that I wanted to show you. Oh, uh, there are some other, you know, like if I go here, uh, if you want, for example, see a open a DOM, you can just open trading DOM from the files. Uh, yeah, I want to open trading DOM for ES. It will open this on this other side. Uh, then you will have to go through a lot of settings when it comes to DOM that uh, can be found. Uh, once again, if you press this F6 uh, bar, I'm not going to do that, you know, but you can go there, set everything there. You can see now I'm same if you would be uh, connected to the live account. Basically, this will be a, your account number and you can just trade from this thing right away. So this is how you can add your DOM into the Sierra chart. Uh, and I think I would say that that's kind of it um, when it comes to all the major, major kind of things. One of the interesting things that uh, some of you might know is if I, for example, let me show you this. Uh, if I have a ch chart drawings here, I will delete this number two. Um, and if I want to, let's say I, mm, this is not a best example for that. So I, I, I'm just, go, I'm just going to skip on that. Basically, if I could for this chart book to, uh, if I had some sort of drawings here, uh, I could mark it up here as well. Uh, how you would do that is in the chart drawings, you basically just type the name of the chart book, then you have uh, this double dot and you know the number of the chart from the first one, but it wouldn't show anything because it's a different symbol and I'm not, not going to change that. But yeah, this has been a very simple guide for basics of the Sierra chart. Like I said, this platform is little hell. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, if you go here to tools, uh, so if you go to here to the global settings, you can customize the keyboard shortcuts. You can make things easier for yourself, but you know, key binding, all the horizontal lines, all the everything, um, make things much easier. So like I said, this platform, not easy to use, not easy for beginners. You know, it's really takes the time, but you can do a lot of things there. If I will show you, uh, for example, one of my chart books for BTC. This one is, you know, available for the those that own bootcamp. Uh, I need to, I think I, because this is a brand new PC, so I, uh, my colors are not set here, but if I put this, I think it's, this one is set for the dark color. You can see here is my TPO. Uh, I have a footprint chart here. This is a filtered footprint chart, which shows just only specific number of contracts. I can see where, you know, really large traders are stepping into the market. Uh, then I have a normal footprint, which, you know, once again shows all the different statistics, uh, different, let me just put this little darker. I think it, you will see it better. You know, uh, all the different stuff I, I, I can see, you know, each bar has POC. Uh, it's kind of very nicely, I would say very nice that you can nicely see where the absorptions happen and everything. Then I have the tick chart, which for, oh yeah, because it's the candle settings. Sorry, I don't want to uh, take too much of your time. I just wanted to show how you can set these things. But like I said, this is a brand new PC. So uh, it's a little bit messy when it comes to colors, but you can see, you know, once again, I have some, um, I have some indicators that show me divergences on Delta. If you can see that, hopefully uh, with this, uh, with this darker color, uh, you know, I have a divergences on Delta marked. I have these kind of a large orders executed. I have profiles on the right with the, the Delta profiles, you know, BWAP, prior value areas, you know, yesterday highs and lows. Then I have this 30 minute chart once again. 
it's got custom candle coloring that I made basing on Delta and volume. So like I said, you know, you can do a lot of things in this platform. It takes a little bit of a time uh, to get used to things. One, one thing I would recommend, uh, I will link uh, some chart book uh, that you can play around with, you know, in the, in the, in the description. So, uh, just, you will find the link there. Uh, the Ticino trader, uh, he has a lot of chart books and it costs like $2 a month or something like, you know, very cheap. So you can play around with that as well. But yeah, definitely Sierra chart, a great platform that I, in my opinion is worth exploring. So thank you for your attention and I will see you in the next video.